Hello, I'm Kate Sung. I teach AP Biology at Cass Day High School. I've also been at Santa Monica High School for 19 years and part of the Amgen Biotech experience for the last 17 years. With my AP Bio students, I complete labs one through five. So I'm here to tell you a little bit about how I go about prepping and what I have my students do. So when do I reserve the kit? Um, I cover the DNA and biotechnology unit toward the end of first semester and into the start of second semester. So this year I reserve the kit right around February. So I just completed um, the full one through five lab with my AP Bio students and it went really well. So you want to kind of um, estimate when um, you will be covering those units and um, reserve your kit right around that time. I've prepared some pacing guides. Um, so currently at Cass State High School, we have 90 minute block periods. At Santa Monica High School, I ran the labs with a 57 minute regular period. So I can show you what I have for both block and for the 55 minute classes. Um, so before picking up the kit, um, I take about two, one to two weeks to cover the biotech unit. And this is the um, learning target for AP Bio. So we cover all these tools and I give them an assessment before we actually conduct the lab. Um, in February, like I said, I pick up the kit. Um, as soon as I pick up the kit, I store the perishables in the freezer and the fridge until I use them for class. So make sure you have a fridge available that can hold all the supplies. It's also good to have uh, crushed ice ready for lab five. So you either have to go get it at the store or from uh, your campus. And um, this is not included in uh, the kit, an incubator for uh, your cells to grow overnight. Um, so if you don't have one, um, maybe ask your um, local lab if they have it. You also want to be sure that you have student goggles and gloves. We don't have enough gloves for all the labs, so I make sure I have enough gloves for uh, the transformation lab. Okay, so I actually made a separate video for the teacher notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and play that um, just to show you how valuable it is and also show you my lab setup for my students. This here is your best friend in preparation for all the labs. Amgen did such an excellent job outlining every lab, what's required, how to aliquot, so def and even how to make the agar. So make sure that you just read through these pages and follow the directions. I especially like how they show you exactly what's required for each lab station on the day you set up each lab. So for example, today I'm doing lab five and lab five tells you what's um, supposed to be at each lab station along with a picture and I can show you my setup for each of my lab stations. As you can see, I just follow exactly what's in that teacher manual. And I also include the directions that are printed and put in these sheet protectors at each lab station. So I don't even need the lab manual or have them look up the PDF. Students just go through it step by step and follow the directions. I really like using the cafeteria trays for my lab stations. Uh, it makes cleanup really easy, and if I have another class doing another lab, it's um, really convenient just to move the trays to the side and clear the way for the next class. Um, the teacher notebook is really great. Um, everything has been um, explained and there are pictures to follow. So just like we teach our students to follow directions, 
um, this is great. You just need to read the directions carefully and follow the steps. For example, um, when you're making the agarose gels, um, you actually need them for two labs, lab 1.2 and lab 4. I actually, the day I get the kit or the day after, I spend about two hours in my classroom just making the gels. Um, for the gels, you want to kind of estimate how many you need and make a little extra just in case. Um, I have about three to four students. You don't want more than four students per group. Ideally, three is, is a great number per group. Um, in my class, I have a maximum of nine groups. So if I have nine groups for lab 1.2, I make them share. So three groups share one gel. So I need to make three gels for lab 1.2. For lab four, I have two groups share one gel. Um, so I make five gels for lab four. And this is basically um, what I have on the whiteboard. I just have the 14 wells drawn on the whiteboard and I tell the students, okay, group one, you're gonna use the left side and group two, you're gonna use the right side. Um, and so if I have nine groups, I may have four um, stations set up for the students. The groups all share and load the gels and they know exactly where to go. Um, I have some pointers about how to cast the gels, so I'm gonna go ahead and play that video. So I wanted to show you the setup for casting your gels. Um, so these are the combs that we use with the 14 wells. And make sure the combs are, uh, aren't too tight. Um, some of them sit kind of tight, so when it comes time to remove them, they actually damage the gel. So make sure um, it's kind of loose fitting um, so that when you remove them, you won't break the gel. So that's how I uh, set it up and then I pour the warm um, agros mix in here. Make sure you just follow the directions. Temperature is really important. Just be patient. And then I wanna show you how to um, set it up into the tank. Uh, we use the enduro tank I'm holding it um, one hand. So you're gonna put the gel in here and then place it in the tank. And then you have your 1X um, SB buffer that you're going to fill up the gel tank with and uh, you can cover it up, plug it in, uh, super easy, just follow the directions. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you guys know how to do that. After I make the gels, I store them in the fridge. Um, Amgen even provides gel spatula and the laminated sheets to place between the gels. Just make sure you add some buffer so it doesn't stick. Um, and then I just take them out when I need them. Okay, let's go over my agenda. So this is my pacing guide for how I conduct day-to-day, um, -day, how I conduct the labs. So I spend one class period this is the 90 block period agenda. I spent one class period going over the PowerPoint that's published on their website. And then I have students uh, follow along as I go over the PowerPoint and answer questions on our interactive platform. I can show you what that looks like. So I have the link here for the PowerPoint and then I have them answer some multiple choice questions and um, also explain why there would be growth in certain plates and not on others, and why it's red on just one of these plates. Um, and then this is um, what I use for assessment and preparation for the labs. I actually put a document together that I have students complete using the PDF, the lab manual. So I let them know that the page numbers that are in parentheses are the page numbers of the PDF not the page numbers that appear on the bottom um, right corner. 
and I assign reading um, as well as questions to help prepare them. By that time, they've already taken their biotech assessment, so this is all a good review and application. Um, and then I tell them that I randomly grade some of these problems and give them a grade. We're, we're standards-based um, grading at our school, so I give them a grade out of four. Um, so I have here uh, exactly what is assigned on what day, um, and then I have here some pointers as to what you need to prepare uh, before you actually conduct the lab. So I would actually spend a full day just practicing pipetting techniques and also running lab 1.2. In a block period, I can do both at the same time. If you're doing period by period, um, I would probably I would probably break that into two two periods. So do just the practice pipetting techniques and then gel electrophoresis. Remember to have groups share the gel. Um, and then you assign them the next uh, reading and the conclusions. Uh, you can take pictures for them because um, there might not be time for you to run the gel after they loaded. Um, so I always load the pictures on the website for them to use for their conclusions. Okay, and then uh, day three is the digestion. That doesn't take very long. Just be sure that you have time, about 30 minutes, to aliquot your reagents before class. Um, again, you have this for the students to complete. Um, I actually give them an incentive. I tell them that, you know, starting lab two, everything that you do is going to affect the outcome of the red colonies. And I give them some extra credit if they do successfully transform their bacteria and get some red colonies. So that kind of motivates students to be on task and to be prepared and to know what's coming up. Um, lab three is building the recombinant, and then lab four is verification. So I would I would do these on two separate days, but if you're in a block um, schedule, you can do both. Um, I actually just did this last week, and it worked really well. We just didn't have enough time to uh, take pictures of the gel, um, so I did it for them. And I have another video to show you the best way to kind of keep organized with the gels and the pictures. And one thing, um, on the day of taking the pictures of the gel, um, I think it's important to label with a piece of tape uh, the period and the group number. So here's a gel, and then um, this one requires an orange filter and the hood, and then you turn this on, and then this is an old gel, so I don't know it's still oh yeah you can still see the bands so then I set the camera right on here snap a picture and upload it to the website and then when I'm done with it I'll take the gel out and put it in a ziploc bag and also use the tape um, so that I know when it comes time for period four group one and two I can always bring it back out and then show them what it actually looks like because we probably don't have time to do it all uh, during our period class. After I take the pictures for lab four, I usually uh, analyze them with my students the day, uh, the day after, just so they understand the value of uh, looking at the gels. So um, if we see anything unexpected or if we, see, um, if we don't see uh, evidence of uh, restriction, and I can always contact my uh, site coordinator and ask uh, what might have gone wrong, or I can ask the students to try to figure out what happened. So it's a, it's a good learning experience that way. So yeah, I do spend some time um, analyzing the gels with the students just to make sure they understand the value of that. Okay, and then we have lab five. Lab five is the big lab where we are transforming our cells. So I let the students know this is um, the, the really important um, part of the lab. 
Um, temperature is really important, keeping going from cold to the warm water bath. Um, so I do uh, walk them through some of the steps. There are so many steps, so I, I make sure that they read them ahead of time. Um, and because there are a lot of steps, if you are in a block period, you have enough time to get it done. However, if you are in a 55 minute regular period, um, you may want to stop after step eight and then continue um, in another period. I have done it with 55 minutes. I just make sure that students know exactly what's expected um, and, and they can finish it. Um, they're just a, a bit rushed, but um, it can be done. And then when you're done, just uh, place them in an incubator uh, at 37 degrees. And um, the next day is, is super fun because students get to check to see if they have their red colonies. And so for the last day, um, I have them look at their plates and then count the red colonies. Students get really excited uh, when they do see those red um, dots. Um, and then we kind of go over uh, the last conclusions together in class and I, I give extra credit for students who are successful in their transformation. I do want to mention um, sometimes uh, students don't get the right colonies. Um, I think there was a year where uh, we hardly got any. Um, and you know, that, that happens. And in that case, I, I use that as a learning opportunity for the students. Um, and I have them think critically about, you know, what might have happened to give us those results. I'm in constant communication with Karen, who's super responsive and helpful, uh, our site co coordinator at Pierce. And I'm always asking her, you know, what do you think about this? Or, you know, how can I tweak this? Um, so it's, it's been a really good running relationship um, with Pierce and with Karen. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. Um, yeah, so don't be afraid to, to reach out to your coordinator. The last thing I want to say, um, this, this is the, the best experience for our students. Um, it's a lot of work on our part, uh, but it's so worth it because at the end of the day, students don't remember much of the content that we teach them, um, but they do remember the, the experience. And they'll definitely remember the red colonies and, and the, the really fun biotech lab where they all look really professional um, using those micro pipetters. Um, so even though it is a lot of uh, work, especially as a new teacher, um, I've been doing it for the last 17, going on 18 years, and every year it's a blast. Um, it's super fun, um, and the students do appreciate it. Um, so with that, I, I do want to um, encourage uh, teachers to go through with the program and also be really good about uh, returning the, the, the supplies, they're very expensive. So uh, the thing that I do at the end is I pack up everything, I wash things, I, I count things and make sure everything is accounted for. Uh, because when we do a good job packing things up, it makes things so much easier for our site coordinator. And, and I know they're working diligently to uh, make things run smoothly. So I'm, I'm very grateful. Uh, thank you so much for the many years of uh, partnering with public school um, with our schools and um, yeah, our, our, I think our students are really benefiting from this experience. So good luck everyone. Um, I hope this was helpful.